Hey, what's up and what's going on? This is Jordan, and welcome back to Movie Buffers, episode 20. Today we're going to be talking about Stranger Things. But before I get into that, I want to ask you all to please like and subscribe, smash the bell so you can get notified when new episodes come out on this channel, and let's start the show. All right, so I finished... And wow, I have a lot to say about it. First off, this season had some very incredible moments. It felt like it led up on the cliche 80s spoof vibes a little bit, and they actually do a little bit of experimenting here. And it resulted in some very intense and terrifying scenes and career-defining performances. It's really come a long way from the previous lesser seasons. So I wanted to talk about these positive things early on so that I can also talk about my opinions on Stranger Things in general as a whole. I kind of really hated Stranger Things in the beginning, but it did perk an interest enough for me to chow down the whole first season in two sittings. But I very much don't like when films and TV shows rely on paying homage to pre-existing films of an era that they're uh, constantly making reference to better movies and cashing in on plots and settings that have already been done 10 times over and better. Now that's not the case entirely with Stranger Things. This show blew up and became a force of its own nature, sprouting fans of all different groups, young and old. It's nostalgic for older audiences and panders a little bit to young ones. I mean, season four had some pretty great scenes though. I wanted to point out the scene where men in army gear are ambushing a house and Will, Mike, and Jonathan are taking cover behind a cop. This scene was f***ing crazy and my speaker system was rocking the house. I was pretty impressed with the choreography and the camera work here. One thing I thought was very lame though, after Nancy and Robin talk to the legendary horror actor Robert England, they find out that the soul can be pulled back in from being consumed by the demo monster Vecna by playing a song that someone is tied to emotionally, I guess? I saw the fourth episode being raved about online, so I, I maybe I was expecting something better, but in the end I thought it was a little cheesy and it kind of dumbed down the show for me. And Millie Bobby Brown also has blown up for some reason. Maybe it's more the Drake controversy than anything. I don't find her acting to be anything special. The Godzilla movies she was in were all just awful. Then again, everyone was just horrible in those movies. Anyone with a real pulse. But the scene where she she clocks the bully girl with the roller skate, I really did not expect that. It, 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 sh it showed that all the rules were out the window in this season. Until she gets bailed out and captured by the evil Hawkins laboratory that tests on her. I know that this was just to circle back and close that storyline up and add a new villain origin story, but a majority of it was just plain boring. And don't get me started on the Robin character, she's way too much in this season. They wrote in extra corks for her and had her be way too manic at times. Her facial expressions were just way over the top, and I'm just gonna say that this is what not to do when continuing a character arc. They took her popularity from the previous seasons and drove her character into the ground. Also, I didn't like how they did Hopper in this season. He was just a frozen prisoner in Russia, and he wasn't in the, in the show very much at all. Then again, he had some badass moments in this. I just felt like it was too cliche, and like behind enemy lines and Russia thing. I mean, can we get over the Russia as the antagonist thing? With real world events happening right now, it feels like it's a flex on how America is the best and Russia is the bad guy. Hoorah bullshit. More stuff I thought was dumb and repetitive was the Eleven back at the lab stuff. I was just bored with it. This season brought plenty of new things to enhance the plot, action, and even the CGI is looking really good at times. The repetition kills this show for me. Also, glamorizing the 80s is really annoying to me. It was a dark and overbearing restrictive time that was very confused. And I hate how shows like today could get teens of today shooting artists like Kate Bush into the number one charts. I like Kate Bush, but kids jumping onto the bandwagon because they heard an EDM remix of Running Up That Hill, it makes me wanna pack it in and call it a life. It's so goddamn annoying to watch this happen because influence in this day and age is, is so flawed and it carries no meaning beyond a trending moment blip. Art is truly showing itself to be dead, at least with Netflix shows. All right, and then there's a scene in season four that like really pissed me off was there was an origin reveal for Vecna when they show, and, and they're leading us to believe that he killed all the kids in this lab, but it shoots into a flashback and it's, it, and it's reminiscent of the Dr. Manhattan scene in the Watchmen movie. And it was straight up just a ripoff. The, the music and the whole telling of the backstory exactly like in Zack Schneider's Watchmen. This is another thing that just bothers me about this show. There's borrowing and then there's paying homage and then there's just blatantly ripping things off and stealing. It just sucks for me because I desperately try to like this show and there are big moments that feel unique and it like it's becoming its own thing. Then it just follows a template into cliches and it, it, it's just honestly too full of itself. And just the general audience, they think that they're watching something new and original. 
And the Duffer brothers know exactly what they're doing. Sorry guys, they're no Russo, Cohen, or even Safdie brothers. I get mad poser vibes from these guys. And until I see another project by them that stands alone as its own original thing, I stand with this opinion, and I'm glad to finally get these words out because I think it's good therapy for me. And the Hopper and Joyce reunion, it had the feels, but it felt like it just took too long for me to get there. So I want to go back and just kind of like pinpoint some things in the show that either like either piqued my interest or completely rubbed me the wrong way. So many ridiculous things in that sporting goods store scene. Like Maya Hawk happening to see her crush across the room. That was cringe as hell. And it seems like the kids always line up and frame and strike a pose. Just It just happens over and over. And it's so overdone in this f***ing show. When the Letterman jacket leader guy is buying a gun and at the same time as Nancy. And then he's trying to like pry the shotgun from her hands. As the counter clerk is standing right there. I was like, yeah, this happens. And all the lines are just so drawn out and predictable. Like, the whole time. I thought I was the monster, but I am not. The monster is you. Oof. Or, or what was the other one? It was, I've survived once. I can survive again. It's like, wow, real f***ing original. I did, however, love the Eleven versus the helicopter scene. Here's another example of the things that these guys are capable of. But I'd rather see it in an original movie or something. I feel like a lot of integrity is getting swallowed up by this overly popular show that has gone on way too long to appease a fan base. When Mike and John and the stoner guy roll up on this scene, it was actually really fun. Good shit. And I have always hated the Papa guy, so I'm glad to see him go. They really got the over-the-top, obvious-looking, creepy old man guy. And he really milked his screen time with that death scene, too. Holy shit. Ugh. And then we end the second-to-last episode with the Stephen King's It Looking House. Everything feels way too familiar. And the buildup of Eddie's character. I actually really loved his chemistry with Dustin, too. And I... Uh, it was pretty emotional when when he died. But no, they, it's like they just wrote him in to have him die off. Like you didn't think we saw that coming? Okay, and then the tentacles attacking Steve, Robin, and Nancy was pretty intense. There was a lot of good stuff in the two and a half hour finale. And I have got to fucking hand it to them. Max's death scene before it was revealed that she survived was probably the most disturbing thing that they've ever done on the show. There was a lot of very good television here, but in the end it feels like they are really stretching this out. And they obviously didn't want to entirely kill off Vecna, probably because he's a fan favorite now. I also didn't like how they kept repeating things that they did before, like the Kate Bush remix coming in again in the finale uh, then the song when it's cold i want to die by moby they did that in the first season and then back when i first saw that i thought they ripped off season six episode six of the sopranos so first off i'm, I'm gonna grade this thing but before i get into that i want to talk a little bit about how this week was a little bit harder than the other weeks so I've been, I've been watching through Stranger Things and taking notes for like two weeks now. So before I even knew about the last two episodes that were going to be dropping on the 1st of July, I thought that the, I thought that they ended the season, the episode on episode seven. I thought that that was the end. And it, it really did feel like I didn't get enough story. And so I just wrote a review that tore the whole show apart. Then they dropped the last two episodes and it completely changed my mind on how I viewed at least this season of the show. I felt that it was really unique and that it became its own thing enough for me to appreciate it. So a lot of those words you heard earlier was my opinions before I saw the last two episodes. But I do stand with a lot of the stuff I said, kind of ripping off content to further progress your career and, and become successful and start another franchise on stuff that already exists. But I did really enjoy the last two episodes. On the Everything Everywhere All at Once episode, I talked a little bit about the shooting in Texas. And then when I saw this one, I was like, wow, there, there's a lot of like life-threatening moments to, to teenagers in this season. And there's even disclaimers in some of the episodes. I finished up the season and was getting ready to record. I was going to record the day before the 4th, and then I slacked on it, and then July 4th came. And then we saw on the news that there was a mass shooting not even a half an hour away from our house in the suburbs of Chicago. It was a really strange experience. So you go outside, there was like dead silence. The night before there were fireworks going off crazy. Like we were, I had to put on headphones. It was giving me a headache because there was just so much celebration going on. I've never seen a city go so quiet as they searched for this, this gunman and the hours leading up to them catching him. Nobody shot off any fireworks. It seemed like everyone waited until they caught this guy to continue celebrating their holiday, which I'm surprised they did continue doing. 
because once they caught him, fireworks went went crazy. I don't really know what to say. Where I stand is that we need to make guns harder to get for people. We need to make sure that people have to do a heavy mental health screening before being able to even be considered of purchasing a handgun, let alone a high-powered rifle that could take out multiple people before anyone knows what's going on. It was a really tragic day. I've never experienced anything like it. it we ended up staying indoors. Most people stayed indoors. So it was just a little bit hard. It was hard for me to wrap my head around all of this and looking at my son and thinking about, you know, all the different things we wanted to go do that day. And we wanted to, we wanted maybe even track down a parade to go to, you know, we wanted to go celebrate with everybody else. And instead people that live so close to us, neighbors, children, um, it was really hard to get motivate myself to record an episode and tear into a show. There's not a lot of joy to be had when things like this happen. Like I can't really enjoy movies or TV shows or video games. It's, or even really caring about talking to whoever's listening to this right now. It's, it's hard to, it, I just want to sit there and stare at the wall. I'm glad that I'm here doing another episode for you guys this week. And that by some freak chance, I didn't lose my life at a, at a, a celebratory gathering. Um, I'm going to be releasing this on Friday. I think I might start releasing episodes on Friday now. It just works better for me. And if this episode's a little bit rough, I apologize. Um, I wanted to just throw that at the end of this episode before I graded this. I didn't want to put it in the beginning, kind of scare people off. So all of that bummer stuff uh, out of the way. Let's grade this bitch. I'm giving Stranger Things season one through four a fat B because the last two episodes saved it a little bit for me. Hey, it's entertaining enough. It's a little too reminiscent of films that we've already seen, though. And if you're like, hey, man, it's for a newer generation to experience the time with the content that speaks to them. And I say, F all that shit, man. And just make the newer generation go and watch the great movies and TV shows that heavily inspired this confused mess of a Netflix original show. You dopes. All right, that's it. That's the show. I know it wasn't too nice, but I'm, I'm trying to give things unbiased reviews so that I can also vent and get out my frustrations that I usually bottle up after dedicating 12 hours or more to a season of a show. I need things to be shorter and more consistent to jump on the bandwagon of loving something just because it tickles a particular nostalgia trigger from time to time. And that's the show. Thank you all for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Smash the bell so you can get notified when new episodes come out on this channel. And this is Movie Buffers. See you next time. Thanks for watching.